There's a lot of people that are plant-based, but there's a lot of people that are that are doing keto. And yeah. people have found success with keto, which really it, it's kind of scary because we we want people to to have health and we want them to have success. And the plant-based lifestyle, I have found success with that since 2012. And so has my husband and some other family members. But I guess when when you find something like keto, it, it kind of it tells you what you want to hear. And in the short term, I guess it gives you the results that yes. you want to have, you know, at least on the outside that you can see. So before we get into that, because that's what you're going to talk about today, we are going to play our game of true or false. It's time for true or false on Be Green with Amy Live. Answer true or false to Amy's questions in the comments below, and Amy will ask our guest for the expert answer. Okay. Are you ready, Green Warriors? The first question is, true or false, Esther had gallbladder disease. Hmm, true or false? And everybody's going to type in their answer. And Esther, why don't you tell us what the answer is? Oh, yes. I did have gallbladder disease, and it was impending. It was really going to impact my ability to make a living um, because my husband and I were sales reps um, to a territory on the East Coast. We had... Um, Ohio and Pennsylvania and New York and New Jersey and the New England states. So we really had to uh, be ready and be healthy uh, when we scheduled all of our appointments. And just before we were getting ready to leave and go back for that trip, uh, I had gallbladder disease. And the doctor said that I needed to have my gallbladder removed. And he didn't give me any cause for what had caused that to happen. And I had all of our appointments scheduled, so there was no way I wanted to cancel all those appointments. Uh, so I said to him, what's the worst thing that can happen? And he said, well, you might be 3,000 miles away from home and have another attack and need to have it taken out. So yes, I did have gallbladder disease. Oh my goodness. I'm going to let you go on with that in a minute, but what I'm going to have to ask you to do, because some people are reporting that you're sounding a little crackly, is if you could get your sign yourself out and then put yourself back in again. You've done okay. that in the past and yes. yeah, go ahead okay. and do that. And then uh, we will go ahead and continue on. I'm really excited to hear uh, her answer. Oh, Amy said true. Very good. See, Amy knows Esther. I guess she, maybe she follows her and cause Esther has a Facebook group called Esther's nutritional journey and she posts in it every day, which is amazing she takes pictures of all the food that she eats and posts it. And she's very careful about that because she wants her food to look delicious. And it is. And also when she posts the food, she also wants to make sure it's compliant so that when people say, what's that? It's not something that isn't compliant. So it kind of keeps her on track too. Now you were talking, I'm just was talking a little bit about your Facebook group. So Esther, you were talking about the gallbladder. Did you, is there something else you wanted to say before we had you come off? Uh, no, I, I think I just wanted to answer the question that yes, I did have gallbladder disease. And yes, I did take that trip uh, knowing that I could have another attack. And in fact, I did have another attack and we were in uh, Pennsylvania and I ended up having to go to the Cleveland Clinic with that uh, gallbladder attack. And wow. then I pancreatitis at the same time. Yes. And that was going to be our next true or false question. So you kind of gave a little hint there. True or false, Esther was hospitalized twice with pancreatitis, where the doctor asked her mm -hmm. if she had called her kids. Yes. Wow. <laughs> um, let's see. Everybody's going to guess at that. And Esther, you're going to tell us the answer. Yes, it is true. I had um, pancreatitis at the same time as I had that gallbladder attack. And then even after I had my gallbladder removed, I had pancreatitis again um, and had to be hospitalized. And it was right after Thanksgiving, which makes sense, eating all that fat you know, on the Atkins diet because that's what I knew to do. And no one told me any differently. And so when the doctor said, have you called your kids yet? 
I didn't want to have the gravity of that hit me. And so I just said, oh, no, I just saw him last week for Thanksgiving. So I hadn't called him yet. But it was it was real serious. Oh, I can't even imagine. About how long ago was that? I'm trying to think of the year that was. I think it was it was before 96, because that's when we left that job. So between 93 and 96. Wow. That's when we were working there. Yeah, so it must have been. In fact, I think I know what it was now. It was the winter of 96, just before my father died, yeah. Because oh, he called me in the hospital and wanted to know if I was okay. That's scary stuff. Okay. And then this is one that I like, and we'll see what your answer is. True or false, even after losing 130 pounds, because we're going to talk about that too, Esther can still eat up to five pounds of food a day. What do you think, Green Warriors? True or false? Okay, Esther. Yes, it's so true. It's so true. <laughs> you know, this is kind of a funny story, but this last week I decided to walk over to the Dollar Tree store, which is close by our house. And when I got over there, they had five pounds of potatoes for sale for five dollars and i thought what a deal so i bought that and i came home and you know as much as i've been eating this way for six years i've never made mashed potatoes and so i came home and i just put about half of the bag in the instant pot added a cup of water cooked it for 15 minutes let it stay on warm until it released naturally and then i added a little bit of almond milk to it and then I got out that little emulsifier that's on a stick, you know, and I just put that right in the Instant Pot and blended it all up and, you know, and left the skins on and everything. And it was delicious. And so I don't know. I think it only took me two or three days to eat all of those potatoes. So you can easily eat up to five pounds of food a day and still maintain your weight loss. Yes, and that's what I love about this lifestyle. Yes. <laughs> and and what did you count when you when you eat up to five pounds? What do you count? Well, the you way I figured calories? it out, it, it, <laughs> the way I figured it out was I looked at the calorie density chart, and I realized that the most calorie dense food that I eat, since I do stay to the left of the red line, is uh, probably potatoes and beans. So if I ate five pounds of beans, and if it was 600 calories a pound, that would be 300 or 3,000 calories, right? But I'm not going to eat only that. So to the extent that I eat less calorie-dense food, then that brings that down. So there's just, I mean, you could just almost be laying in bed all day and burn up that much calories. <laughs> yes, and it is, but it's definitely a lot of fun to, to know that you can eat all the healthy food that you want until you're comfortably full yes and not and not try to weigh or measure the food no. or be worried that you're having too many you know of whatever the the macro is you know the, the right. carbs or the fat or whatever you, you, you if you eat what is it was in, and you talked about the red line and, and maybe we should also show that too because i think i have that slide and then this way you could well, let me see if I have it. Yeah, here it is. So you talked about that. Maybe you want to um, show, discuss it now that we have it up for everybody to yes, see. Yes, that's great. See, that's what I eat. It's vegetables, fruit, include, and vegetables really includes potatoes and corn and squash and so forth. And whole grains, which is for me is mostly brown rice, uh, but oatmeal as well. I don't eat pasta generally and beans and legumes. So as long as I stay above of that green line on this chart, I'm home free. There's just no way I'm going to gain that weight back. And that gives me such peace of mind because we need guidance sometimes when we need to have, I don't like the idea of rules, but it's just a guide and it shows you if you stay above that green line, you can just eat as much as you want until you're satisfied. And sometimes, you know, we're not sure if we're hungry. We just have that gnawing feeling and it may not be in our stomach. It may be in our brain or in our heart. There may be something lacking in our life and we think food's going to fill that hole. But if we're not sure if we're hungry or not, I say, well, eat another potato because if you're not hungry, um, you know, you may get tired of that. But the, the thing that's so exciting about it for me is that sometimes I'm thirsty and I don't know that. 
And so I try to keep, uh, this is so cute. It says, what does it say today? Good morning, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I try water. So if you're not sure if you're hungry or not, just try some warm water. You can always drink more water. And if that doesn't take it away, check yourself out and see if you're tired. Maybe you need a nap or need a rest. Or maybe you just need to get out of the kitchen and take a walk. You know, Isn't that so, so? Yeah. Yeah, what I notice is if I, I check out, am I tired, am I thirsty, or am I sleepy, or am I bored? You know, there can be all those prompts that come yeah. through our brain. I think and Al was on, Al is your plant-based friend, and he was on at one time, and we were talking about how to stay committed. And, and I think he had said something about, are you hungry? Are you angry? Are you lonely? Are you tired? <laughs> and I love that. Yes, and that spells halt. <laughs> exactly. I like that. I like that too. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's so, just... so you, I mean, you were, and, and we should show this also, right? We we should show that you were you were overweight for for a while in your lifetime, and you tried. Did you try to lose weight a lot? Oh often? yes, yes. I. You know, I like so many people that are morbidly obese, like I was. You know, we've we've tried everything because we're desperate to find an answer, but and it's just so hard to find the true answer in terms of even going to a medical doctor. They may not know. They don't have the patience and the time to hold your hand and lead you through the process. But yeah, this picture is exactly how I looked when we were in Ireland. That those pictures were taken in Ireland. Um, and that was May of 2016, and I started the diet, uh, the whole food plant-based diet, uh, in July 13th of, of that year. So that was, you know, it wasn't like I could have gone, maybe there was even a time when I was bigger than that. Uh, there was two times I was bigger than that even. However, that's what showed me exactly how I looked before I started the program. So that's why I like those pictures. Right. Because, because but before that. You tried other kinds of weight oh, loss, yes. right? I, I, I had gone to tops meetings and even earned the charms for my bracelet. And then we would go out for lunch afterwards, you know, after having a meeting and then eat all the junk. And I tried Overeaters Anonymous, and I think they even went out for lunch afterwards. And I tried the uh, Atkins diet. I tried one time a 600 calorie a day diet that I found in Reader's Digest. I tried drinking a product called Slender now, and I even became a distributor for it because I thought maybe that protein drink would be an answer. Um, what else did I try? Just, you know, it, grapefruit diet, the hard boiled eggs diet, um, you know, and then I even went to a place called the Diet Center, and th that worked okay, you know, for a while because any program you do will work. But you know what's important? is to get our minds on health, not on a scale. Because all of these other programs work temporarily because you're cutting out sugar and probably cutting out white flour. And you're, and you're, so you're changing your intake, right? And so you probably will lose some weight when you make any kind of a change in your diet. But what about your health? What does it cost your health to, re, to lose weight in these drastic ways that aren't sustainable? So right. when I found my answer, oh, I mean to tell you, I just want to tell the whole world because maybe others will find other paths. I can't say my way is the only way, but this all I can testify to because it has worked for me. Right. So now you talked about the Atkins and today we're going to be talking about keto. And so Atkins is pretty similar. Did you, did you try keto or did you, did you do the Atkins, which puts you in ketosis anyway? Right. So what right. At the time that I was doing it back in the 90s, keto wasn't a word that's on the cover of every magazine in the checkout right. counter. But ketogenesis a was a word. Right. Well, even then, we wanted to put our body into a state of ketosis. You know? right. But the, the diet I followed at that time was called Dr. Atkins' Revolutionary Diet. It was the Dr. Atkins diet. And now keto is the new buzzword. Uh, right. For but basically it's basically the same thing. Yeah. So, yes, I went on the Atkins, and that's when I had that gallbladder disease, you know, because of all that fat.
But what I learned through that in retrospect was I always knew I was a sugar, sugar addict. But what I didn't know was also a fat addict. I love fat foods. You know, I love that. So giving up sugar and white flour doing the Atkins program wasn't that hard for me because I could still eat all of the fat-laden food. In fact, it's interesting that, um, let's see, a year ago today, I wrote a word on my Facebook group, and it was all about that story. And I thought, if you want to, I could even read it to you. Yeah, let's let us let let's do that. And I wanted to tell everybody that Esther has this book from Donuts to Potatoes, which is so awesome. And she has 365 days of words in that she journaled in here that you could get inspiration from. And, and that's why we talk about what your word of the day is. And you're talking about a word that you journaled at one time. Yeah. So I, I just want to let people know that what you're going to read is is kind of like what's in this book. Yes. So yes. because what happened was in 2019, I wrote a word every day and a little essay to encourage people. And people in my group, Esther's Nutritional Journey, said, Esther, you need to write a book. And I said, why would I write a book when I give it to you free every day in my group? I mean, why do you want to pay for it? And some of them said, no, 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 we want a book. So I went ahead and did a book. But I have continued that process through 2020, 2021, and now 2022, almost finishing up my fourth year of doing that. So today, and what I do in my group too, is I post a new word each day, but then I go back and I post the word that I had for 2021, 2020, and 2019, because I don't know what your needs are. And if I throw enough mud on the wall, some will stick, right? <laughs> exactly. So, so this was, this was, and I, so, and, and when you're in my journey, you can go to the search bar and you can type in any day and bring up prior uh, year's words as well. So that's what I did this morning. I thought, oh, this is really neat. It's so apropos for talking with you on about the keto diet. So the word uh, this day, a year ago, was cleave. And I said, cleave or cling. Maybe there is no separation. Theories of healthful eating come and go. And it is normal to cleave to that which has served us well. It is also easy to cleave to what we want, whether or not it has been in our best interest. I defended the Atkins diet for a long time. I was losing weight. I got to indulge in some of my favorites. I could eat mayonnaise, butter, cheese, meats, and even carcinogenic bacon, lunch meats, and surprisingly, pork rinds. It didn't matter to me that I had put my kidneys into a state of ketosis in order for this plan to work. When I got gallstones and later gallbladder disease and pancreatitis at the same time and ended up in the emergency room at the Cleveland Clinic, thousands of miles from home, did anyone ever make the connection to what I had been feasting on? No. I resumed the diet. I still clung to my fleshy desires. I couldn't have sweets but I could indulge in my alternate addiction, fats. A second round of pancreatitis raised its ugly head, and once again I landed in the emergency room where my numbers were so high the doctor asked me if I had notified my kids. I played it off by saying I had just seen them on Thanksgiving. Not a coincidence after the fat-laden meal consumed by so many of us. We have a free choice. We decide what to put on the end of our fork, and we are either the victim or the healer through our choices. Now I cleave to nature's wonderful gifts of fruit, vegetables, grains, and beans, and live a drug-free life. It is a new kind of cleavage. That's, I just, and all your entries in the, in the book are like this. I mean, they just get you to think, you know, they really do. 
And wow. and like you said, it, it's just things that can really, we can all relate to it. And it, it may not just be about what we're eating. It might just be through about some other struggles that we may be experiencing at the time. But these things are just, these entries are just so helpful and the words are so helpful and they just, they just ring true. And Jesse T said, beautiful. Yes, oh, yeah. it is. It is. Well, it was so, it was so on point that that was the word for this day. Yes. Isn't and that we're something? talking about that? Yeah, just, I, I call it little miracles. It's just fun. It, Why not? It, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That That's something, isn't that? Because yeah. yeah. we, we didn't plan it that way. No, no <laughs> uh, not at all. So and sometimes, that, I, sometimes I tell people, we'll, we'll look up the date of your birthday. Uh huh. Right. And see, see what that means for you. So that was that was really nice. And I could just pull that up on my little phone and share yeah. it with you. Yeah. So, and it was. Yeah. And, and but I also like about the book is that even though it has it has a day the day of the of the week and the and the month and everything and every so 365 days and it has a date so you can just look up today's date and and find something but sometimes you can just just yes. flip the pages and see what has what does the universe want you to read today i love <laughs> that. I, I just like to do that yeah, I, I like it I, I i really do think we're guided sometimes to get the answers not sometimes i think we're guided all the times if we take time to listen Oh, yeah. your bodies you know because if you have pain it's telling you something don't wait until the alarm clock goes off and you have to go to the emergency room exactly exactly you know? and that's the thing about this this keto movement because you know i i mean you you probably got some results when you were first on that atkins diet which is similar yes. to the keto right you did right. lose some weight mm -hmm. yeah. yes we did and i'd get out those little strips you know we had to go to the drugstore and buy these little keto strips and pee on them and make sure it's still turning purple and you know to affirm that we're still in the state of ketosis but state of ketosis is bad health mm. it's not normal to be there think what it does to your kidneys having to process all that protein and everything so it's, it's a very seductive program because if you like fat you know like i do and did i could eat all of that all of that um, terrible food that's really destructive but but the thing is do you want the scale to say the right number or do you want to be healthy Mm -hmm. And there's nothing like having a healthy mind. I mean, you can have a skinny body, but if your mind isn't clear, you still have that brain fog and you still are sick and doing damage to your bodies, you know, and having to have that surgery. And if I had known then what I know now, I could have stopped doing that fat laden diet and not had gallbladder disease and I'd still have my gallbladder. Mm. So. Right. And you still would have lost weight. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> but you know, we, we can't go back and say we could have, would have, should have. It's mm -hmm. in the past. I did the best I could. The doctors that I had gave me the best information they had. And so, you know, as we learn more, we can share more. But it's, um, you can't know what you don't know. <laughs> so. Yes, that's absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, so you, you've been through a lot of different diets and you did the, the keto which was back then the Atkins and, you know, you, you were on a lot of medications and things during that time. Did that going on the keto, did that make you get off any medications? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. And it's just, you know, going plant-based. I do want to clarify one thing because when I read an older post, uh, there has been one change and some people think, well, Esther got off her thyroid medication by going plant-based and it is true that I did for I think it was three years I got off but after being in COVID and not eating out and not having any iodized salt at all maybe um, I don't know exactly why but my numbers my TSH level started climbing after being off of my thyroid medication because I had been taking like a hundred I they call them milligrams or whatever or maybe even 125 and as I went on the plant-based diet the my requirements came down so i went from like 100 or 125 down to 100 and then down to 75 and then down to 50 and so i challenged my doctor and i said i would like to be off all medications and that's the last one to go i had taken statins i was taking sleeping pills i was taking pain pills 
so I wanted to get off all medication. Oh, and also I was taking lithium for a manic depressive disorder. So I wanted to get off all medications, but that's kind of can be pride sometimes too. Yeah. And when you eat a diet like I did with, I love sausage and I love hot dogs and all that stuff. And Dr. McDougall says that we can actually uh, create an autoimmune disease by taking in the animal products that have their own thyroid in it. And then our body tries to fight that. Uh -huh. And so once you have damaged your thyroid, it may not be that you were able to get off it totally. But I did try it for three years and got off of it. And I didn't have any symptoms. So then it was really hard for me to want to go back on the thyroid medication when the TSH level started climbing back up again. But I gave it some real thought. And I thought, you know, it's not failure to be yeah. on required medication if your body requires it. So I went back on only 25 milligrams and I'm doing fine. I brought it down from 11.5 back down to five. And I could probably take even more and bring it lower, but my plant-based doctor is happy with that. So that's where we are. I just wanted to throw that out because, you know, when I read my book, you know, it says I got off all medications, but since then I've made that adjustment. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I I really appreciate your transparency, and I and throughout the different interviews, the different guests that I have, I I try to express that the plant based lifestyle is a wonderful way of eating. It's not just great for your health, but it's great, of course, for the environment and and the animals. But it's not it's not the end all do all lifestyle change. And sometimes, especially if, like you said, if you've been doing eating poorly or healthy. I thought I was eating healthy <laughs> and I wasn't. <laughs> but if you're eating in that way for a, a number of years, you can definitely do some damage to your body that can't always be reversed. Yeah. But you are on a very low dose where, where if you weren't eating this way, I, I don't see that mm -hmm. you would have been able to come down to that low dose. That's true. And the nice thing is I don't have any symptoms either way. When I went, I think about three years from 2018 till just this summer, on no, no, no uh, levoid thyroxine, you know, I didn't have any symptoms, and that's why it was hard psychologically yeah. for me to go back on it because I didn't have any symptoms. I only had the lab to go by, but yeah. I decided that's important, and I think it's also important to be vulnerable to people because uh, it's easy sometimes to glorify. Not, to testify about the wonderful benefits of a plant-based diet and if other people are still I know I know several people that still take their levothyroxine and uh, it, it's not a it's not a competitive game we're playing exactly you know exactly. It's, we each have to find we're just following our own journey and our own pathway you know and, and uh, some people you know won't give up coffee some people may not give up alcohol and we're all just we're just learning our life and doing the best we can. And so there's not a standard that everyone must reach or be a failure. You know, we're just all on our journey. So. That's very, very well put, very well put. And I'm sure that you encounter people, maybe even family members that are maybe doing this keto kind of diet now. Yeah. Yes, I've had one family member even have the um, stomach, um, surgery oh mm. you know and i think another one's doing keto and it, it's so tempting because it's out there and you can eat in restaurants and get what you need you know when you go on a plant-based diet you have to think twice of eating in a restaurant because everything is either centered around meat or if not even on the salads they want to charge you for putting meat on your salad and if you don't want the meat you still pay the price yeah in many yeah. restaurants so it's it's a challenge. It's a challenge. But you know what? I just want to encourage people, just do the best you can every day that you can. And perfection isn't for any of us because none of us are perfect. Yep. And, you know, I think it's Dr. Doug Lyle who says an A minus is a good grade. <laughs> you know, and I, I think the importance about sticking to the plan as closely as possible is that if you don't, those little days that you might go off plan, they can throw you for a loop. You know, if you're addicted like I was, you know, one one of a rich dessert might make me want more and more and more. 
And even though I've been doing this for six years now, my taste buds have adapted. And so I just want, I used to say, I put my tongue on restriction because for so long my tongue governed my body and my mind. And it just has no place in my mind. So now that I've neuroadapted my, my taste buds to the way I eat, that's my happy zone. But, you know, people who want to cheat, you know, it's kind of like if you're a smoker, you wouldn't smoke, you wouldn't go f smoke free five days a week and then cheat on the weekends <laughs> because it would keep you in that addicted state. And the same thing with some people with alcohol. If you're an alcoholic, there's no way you can say, well, I'm going to take one day off a week and cheat. Because, you know, it just, and even Dr. McDougall, I think, said it took, when he was a young man, he smoked. And I think it took 13 tries before he ever succeeded. Because you can't go back and forth. And I like to say, you can't serve two masters. So we choose what we're going to do. And in my case, I chose Dr. McDougall's Maximum Weight Loss book. No, I didn't. It was given to me free. And because I didn't know where to turn. I had no information about being a vegan. I, had not, I knew nothing about plant-based. And my friend gave me that book, and I thought, well, I've tried everything else. I'm going to put it to the test. So if you're going to do a test, do a test, but don't be going back and forth or it won't be a clean test. Right. And I just, I'm going to show a couple more of your, your pictures. So this one we had already looked at. And there's your husband, Ben. Yeah. And, yeah. You, and, and there's a love story in this Donuts to Potatoes uh, yes. book, too. Yeah. So you, if you guys it's like love stories. Wonderful. But this this is just so striking. This right here just kind of says it all, you know. Okay. And, 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 and how does it feel sometimes when you look at the, the former version of you? That, well, you know, I, which one do you relate to, to now? Yeah, I used to be embarrassed and I think, my goodness, look at those boobs. They almost covered all my thighs. They almost reached to my knees, you know. And I, I look at that girl and I think, you know, she was happy. I mean, she was in love with Ben and that picture was another one from Ireland. And and that one too. And then I don't know. It's it's you have to love all of yourself, all of your incarnations. You know, don't you know, I did the best I could at that time and, and I, I'm so glad I could walk now and I'm I'm glad that I yeah, I, I mean it's just wonderful to have a new life. And we can transform our lives. We are the creators of our life. You know, we are the ones that determine it and those temptations come and it's not always easy. But if you, it's like I sometimes say, well, when we get married, we don't say, I'll try. We make a commitment. We say, I do. And so I say, listen to Wayne Dyer. Listen to Louise Hay. Listen to some of these people who have gone through hard times. And be spiritually uplifted, whatever that spirituality means to you. I don't want to preach religion, but I do want to talk about we are spiritual beings in this in this body and by renewing our minds we can change how our body looks you know so we can reframe things like someone will write to me and they'll say oh it is so hard and i said we can turn that around and we can say it's becoming easier day by day with practice you know and our negative thinking needs to be plucked out like a weed in our garden you know all of these negative things that we've heard from childhood. Maybe we've had people tell us, oh, you'll, you've tried losing weight so many times, you'll never lose your weight. And we play that message over and over in our brains, but we can hit the delete button. Yes, that's beautifully said. And, and for some people, though, they just didn't find out the right information. You know, you were reading and researching, it, maybe not not actively, but you were anytime you came across something that said diet, Oftentimes you said, hmm, I didn't try that one. Maybe that's the one I need to do. And that's yeah. going to be the answer. Is that is that how you kind of went about it every once well, in a while? Sure. sure. And I had a friend who died last year on Halloween. And he knew about this way of eating. But he was so addicted to his food that he he just couldn't. And he was always looking for the magic bowl. Like one time we'd go out for dinner and he'd say, Okay, I'm on a new diet. Now, this diet is I can eat all I want within one hour, you know. So then he didn't want to talk while we were having lunch out because he wanted to eat as much as he could during that hour. And there's all kinds of gimmicks out there, you know. But when you when I found my truth, what works for me and resonate for me, 
then that's what I want to proclaim. Because there is, and I sometimes say to people, eat what nature has created for you. You know, and sometimes if somebody's kind of a spiritual person, I'll say, you know, eat what God made, if you want to look at it in that terms. And if you don't want to use the word God, I don't care. Use, use the universe. What has been provided for us as human beings to eat easily on this on this planet and it's food that is grown and so I say eat you know plants and eat what's made in a plant only if you must you know, mm -hmm. but really examine that if it comes from a store it's on the shelf and has preservatives in it think twice I'm not saying you can't eat any of that but focus on the fresh food as much as possible whole whole food you know, I think that that may be one of the reasons why the Atkins or the keto has the, at least in the beginning, is has helps people to lose weight because for, for I think from my understanding, they restrict you from eating processed foods, right? Mm -hmm. Well, no, part. no, because I can Not eat too. bacon and I can eat sausage. Or oh yeah, that was a process. I should say processed foods that aren't meat, aren't animals. Like crackers and uh, yeah. and, and things made right, yeah, they, bread. Their, their big thing is they gave carbs a bad name. Yeah, because they didn't want us eating carbs when we're we are starchivores. Carbs mm -hmm. is what we need for our brain functioning and for our energy level, and that's what we get with our potatoes and our beans and our rice. You can't live on lettuce alone, even mm -hmm. if you're in a honeymoon. <laughs> Well, I think that's that's an important thing to talk about too, because so oftentimes people are not familiar with the difference between the different kinds of carbs that there are, because a, a carb can be a, a potato, but a carb could also be a cracker or a cookie yes, or, or yeah. a cereal. Sure. So, and there's different kinds of carbs and they're not all the same. Yeah, I think that's one reason why Dr. McDougall uh, has a book called... Um, the starch solution. So he talks about the carbs that are complex carbs, not simple carbs. But you know, as it turns out, um, carbs really only have, I think it's like one calorie per gram because most things say that it's four cal calories per gram. But that's true of sugar. But when you take the water content and the fiber out of uh, potatoes, for instance, you're down to only one calorie per gram. So it's even more exciting. So we are starchivores. And that's what we need. That's what our lifestyle and people in all generations, all different countries have lived and survived on oh, even white rice and corn and beans and barley and all of these wonderful things. So that's our basis. So now when I make a meal, instead of starting out with what kind of a meat do I want for that meal, I start out with what starch do I want? And then I can just add some fruit and salad and whatever to it and I've got a meal. So. And then now potatoes, sometimes they're even my new bread. You know, I'll take a slice of potato and I'll use it to scoop up other vegetables on my fork and it's like my bread. And then sometimes it's my meat and sometimes it's... The other day when we went to Apple Hill, uh, we bought some apples and I ate one. And then we were on our way home. We also bought some potatoes. And I don't normally buy the purple skinned ones oh. that I did that day. And so I thought, well, instead of eating another apple, I wonder if I just eat a potato. So I ate a potato raw and it was delicious. It was crunchy, it was juicy and uh, very easy. And some people have have uh, challenged me on that, whether or not a raw potato is safe, but Google it yourself and make your own decision. Yeah, you know? I actually, I have a recipe that includes raw sweet potatoes okay. and uh, it's, a, it's a raw sweet potato salad and you, you uh, chop up the potatoes well actually you kind of grate them so it's almost looks like a coleslaw kind of thing oh. and, and and it has lemon juice it has ginger in it wow and and some raisins and it just and then it's just so it's delicious so i i've eaten it and nothing yeah. nothing bad happened but the um the, the the those potatoes and this those starches the ones that are not meant you know, having refined and having something happening to them in a factory, the ones that you wow. can pull out of the ground or, or grab off of a plant or something. Those are the ones that keep us satiated. And, yeah. and we don't, and they, they still fall the line below that line that they don't, they don't fall below the line of the calorie density. So we can still 
eat them. Yeah. And and yeah. and also the beans and legumes and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just such a wonderful thing. And then now that I've been at a real goal weight for over three years now, sometimes I will eat a little avocado. Mm -hmm. And when I and recently I was given a nice big box of fresh walnuts. And so I measure them out and I allow myself seven of them mm -hmm. and I crack them and I take the meat out and enjoy each piece, you know. But by count, counting that, it just keeps me from overeating them. Right. Because the nuts are, I think that they they have health benefits, but they, they, they come packaged in a difficult package to open yeah. for a reason. Yeah. Because we're not it. meant to to eat a two pound bag of them in one sitting, right? They, isn't, right. Isn't this cute? Oh, it's adorable. I love oh, it. Oh, how cute. Right, sitting right here on my table. Uh -huh. Right, and, so yeah, they take some, and even they actually come in an outer shell from, you know, from that. That's, that's yes. not the complete outer shell. So if you found them in nature, you'd have to get through that shell and then yes. get through that the shell that you're showing so and that's why they're they're calorie dense because it yeah. takes a long time to get to them and and that's how we should have them not not in two pound bags right. or whatever so M mona wanted to know is her husband 100 percent, or does he have some foods in the house tempting foods if yes how does esther handle that okay when i first started uh, and please leave that up so i could answer yes. all the questions Mm -hmm. uh, when I first started, Ben said, oh, I could never eat like you. Of course, he'd been trying to lose weight. And he got now, now, he was he was the donut man, right? So yes, he owned oh, a yes, donut yes. shop. I mean, he, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for a lot of years. And then by, by the time we got married, then he was out of the business. But that is where we met. And that fed my addiction every day on the way to work. I'd stop by and get my coffee and donut and get to see him and, and uh you know, we've seen each other every day since. That's been 35 years. Um, but anyway, so yes, he said, I was going on this new diet. And he said, no, he couldn't do it. And I said, that's fine. Well, fortunately, he liked to cook. So he just continued making his own food. So unlike other people where women maybe are the, they have to be the cook for the whole family. I was fortunate in that respect. So anyway, so he didn't do it. And I guess it was really about nine months before he decided to do it. And he said, well, he wanted to eat up all the meat that was in the freezer. And then he wanted to wait until all this was gone and everything. So eventually he did come around. But what I did say to him at the beginning is, I need some help. And you know, ask for help, even if it's the hundredth time, um, because we all need to ask help. And there's a humility in that too, that it's helpful. So what I said to him was, well, could you make me a deal? Could you, agree not to bring any sweets into the house and he said yes so that really helped but i still had in the house eggs and mayonnaise and meat and everything else but he wasn't but that wasn't bothering me when i was starting this so he did if he bought some special treats at costco that were healthy but i didn't he kept them outside so that was there and then uh, and so then, like I said, then still there was, you know, the mayonnaise, there still was the cheese, there was still the bread, there was still um, oil in the house. But I, I was okay with that. So now he does eat differently than I do, but he's still plant-based. I mean, by that I mean he eats no animal and no dairy and no oil in the house. If we go to a restaurant and he orders a chimichanga, which is a fried burrito, that's his deal, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we have no oil in the house anymore. Um, so he eats more tortillas than I do. He eats more pasta than I do. He eats more bread than I do. He eats, um, let's see, what else does he do? Um, that's what's coming to my mind right now. But the difference is he's a man. He goes to the gym almost every day. He rides 12 miles on the bike there. And he has lost and maintained his weight. However, if I could be the boss of him, I would still say it would be better to eat extra portions of potatoes, extra portions of vegetables, in my view. Yeah. But this is his life. Mm -hmm. And so I try to keep my eyes on my own plate, and he does his, and he wants food to taste good. So he's still plant-based. He's still, um, you know, not he's still vegan, if you want to call it that. 
Um, but he just, and he eats more avocado than I do. Um, but it's his, it's his thing, you know, so you can, you can be different in the same household, but yes. what works for me is being more radical. Mm -hmm. I think, I think, and I, a lot of the women that I talk to, it, it seems like men, men burn more calories in the day than women and they have a requirement for a higher amount of calories. I think that that's something, especially for the women that are adopting this lifestyle and want their, their man to come along that they, they have to, and it sounds like that's what you're, you're acknowledging that they can't eat the same portion and the same calorie density that we're eating because their requirements are so much higher. Yeah. And and if if we expect them to do that, then we're probably setting them up for failure. Yeah. And that we don't want that, right? No. <laughs> yeah, I I think I, my mom had a cousin one time, and I asked her a question about something, and she said, "I never thought it was my place to tell somebody else how to live." And I think that's what happens when women get on board first; they want to save their husbands, or sometimes it helps happens the other way around. But you know what? We each come to this on our own way and our own timing. And we can't try to convert someone else. We can't try to make them do what we're doing just to make it easier for us. We have to decide what is best for us and make a decision and stick with that, even against all odds. And if, if there are times when you have grandchildren over, maybe some people are younger and still follow me and they have children in their home and they think they have to give them treats. Well, I don't understand mm. that, but you know, we have to each work it out our own way. Yes. Yes. You're absolutely right. And you've been talking a lot about potatoes and Jesse T said, Ooh, talk about potatoes in the fridge. Are you, do you, do you talk about that, about how you cook a potato and yeah. then put it in the refrigerator? Sure. What, what, I, what I love the most, what is my new candy, is put, uh, sweet potatoes. And those I like to roast on a, on a baking sheet with a piece of parchment because when the, I'm going to start getting excited here thinking about it. <laughs> when, those, when those sweet potatoes are roasted in the oven at 400 for an hour, they exude candy. They exude this juice that sometimes you can peel off of the parchment paper. I'm salivating and <laughs> eat it. And that is my new candy. It is so good. And so I love, love, love sweet potatoes roasted, best of all. And then I just put them in a plastic bag and stick them in the refrigerator because I always do a tray at a time. And sometimes I'll do regular either russet potatoes or yellow gold potatoes in the instant pot with a cup of water for 15 minutes and left on warm until the pressure is released. And then when I have more than that, sometimes we'll put it in a plastic Tupperware container and stick it in the refrigerator. And then I just take one out when I want it and stick it in the microwave for me, maybe a minute, 11 seconds, or maybe a little longer if you want it hotter, and eat them that way. Uh, sometimes I, you know, people say, well, how else can you eat potatoes? Well, you can put them in soups, you can put them in salads, you can put beans on top of them. It's good with mustard. You can pretend you're at the ballpark. Uh, it's good with sauerkraut. Um, so there's so many ways to use. They're so versatile. And yes. you can live on potatoes alone and be healthy. Mm -hmm. So anything else you add to your diet is going to be a bonus. But that's the basic thing in your potatoes, you know. Yes, absolutely. Well, I I I enjoy them too, and I've I've had I have a daughter who loves them a lot, and she likes to cut them up like French fries, and she'll put them on a microwave safe plate, and mm -hmm. just microwave them, and they 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 come out like little, little French fries, yes. you know? I mean, it's not quite the same as an air fryer would do, but she just likes to do it because it's convenient yeah. to do it that way. You know, yeah. I, I have an air fryer, but you know why I don't like to use it? Because it makes me, it doesn't make me do anything. I choose to eat more yeah. than I need to. Because you take a potato and you put it in the air fryer, it's hardly anything at all. By the time it gets somewhat dehydrated. Yeah. So it becomes more concentrated and then you might want to dip it in ketchup, which might be heavier in salt or something. So I, I would rather, I would rather not use the air fryer for myself, but for yeah. children and for husbands and other people, I mean, I, it definitely has its advantage, but 
but I would, if someone had to choose between an air fryer and an instant pot, there's yeah. no question I'd choose the instant pot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she she uses that instant pot quite a bit too. Oh, yeah. She has she has an apartment, so it's just her, and she has she has the little three quart, cute little one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Mona wants to know what are some of Esther's favorite meals, and now. We could guess, we can make that a true or false with potatoes and we'd all yes, guess the right yeah. answer. So tell yeah. us more about well, what you I, like to I eat. Always, I, I always start, you know, I'm doing something interesting too because I used to eat breakfast every day and I would have a steel cut oatmeal and then we kind of graduated up into uh, oat groats, which is less refined than steel cut oats. And we were eating that. But you know what? I've kind of done this I don't like to call it intermittent fasting, but I'm, I, I just don't eat until after 11 o'clock now. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to be 11 or 12 o'clock, I would much rather have potatoes than I would oatmeal. Right. And there's nothing wrong with oatmeal. So if you think you need breakfast, oatmeal is a great go-to, you know, because we don't do eggs. We don't, I mean, I don't do pancakes and waffles and all that. So my favorite meal, well, I have it once a week. I splurge. We go to El Papagayo. It's a restaurant here in Sacramento. And there's a group of us, sometimes 20, 25 people come for dinner. And I do have their uh, bean and rice and potato burrito. Oh. And, and it's vegan and it's, it has potatoes in it as well. And it comes with a little uh, pico de gallo. So that's probably my splurge once a week is having that. But at home, my favorite meal would be a sweet potato and a vegetable like broccoli or maybe asparagus or uh, green beans. And I, sometimes I'll eat a whole pound of carrots at a time. I love carrots. I just love all my vegetables. And so, yeah, it's just potato plus a vegetable and a fruit. And then, uh, and then I throw in beans, but I do limit my beans to one cup a day because somewhere along the, along the way, I heard Dr. McDougall say, that as we get older, uh, we do not need that much protein. Can you believe it? We can get too much protein on our um, eating this way. <laughs> so I, I kind of limit my beans to um, one cup a day. Right. So I throw that in. Yeah. And, 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 go ahead. Yeah, just potatoes and a vegetable and a, a piece of fruit that gives me a balanced diet. Yeah. Oh, and we were talking earlier about men, and Cheryl said men generally have more muscle mass. They burn more calories. That's right. Yeah. It's that's generally true, and, yeah. and that's probably why they they you know. And when you were talking about your husband, my my husband, he likes to get a uh, whole wheat pasta uh -huh. sometimes, and uh, he's he likes to cook a lot, and so sometimes he'll have that whole wheat pasta, and he'll want to mix it in with with the rest of the vegetables and uh -huh. the different things that he's got going in there, and and now he knows that I really prefer if that he keeps it separate, which, I mean, if he did mix it in, that would be fine. But then I would have to be picking it because that's yeah. what I do. Yeah. <laughs> I just, because, uh, you know, I think, I think women are just, uh, we're, we're meant, we're meant to just look at a, a noodle and, and I do know. a few pounds. Like, well, you know, it's not thing, our fault. <laughs> yeah. Another thing I do, which really does help me is I take a picture of everything I put in my mouth. Yes. And oftentimes Ben will be making something and he'll say, do you want to buy it? I say, no, because then I have to take a picture of it and then I have to describe it to my people and it's just too much work. So one time I did take a bite of something, I tasted it and then I went to the sink and I spit it out. Huh, there you go. <laughs> now you didn't have to take a picture of it. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> or you could have taken a picture of it in the sink. Yeah, <laughs> right. This is what I yeah. didn't eat. I yeah, could have, right. but I didn't do it. <laughs> but it's amazing how those little tastes add up. Yes. You know, even when you're preparing food, you get a taste of this and a taste of that and a taste of that. And the other thing I've given up is chasing recipes. Because to me, when I was chasing recipes, I was always saying, I'm not satisfied with what I'm eating. Mm -hmm. And I need something that has more of a dopamine hit. But even some of these fancy recipes don't, if they're vegan and whole food plant-based, they might remind you of a cake you used to eat or a muffin you used to eat or something. But they're still not going to give you that dopamine hit without that sugar in it and stuff. So I don't know. That's just me, though. If, if, you're, if you like cooking, if you like being in the kitchen more often than I do, if, 
you know, do your own thing. It's okay. But that's just me. And I, so I don't even need recipes anymore. I just cook what I eat and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it's, uh... I just try to keep it simple. That's my motto. Yeah. Just keep it simple because the more complicated you get. And some people tell me, oh, I need variety. Well, if you need variety, then, you know, go for variety. But uh, I'm thankful that I can eat very simply. In fact, it was kind of funny. I came back from that Dollar Tree store the other day, and I had that 10-pound bag of potatoes. And I saw a homeless lady uh, sleeping on the sidewalk. And I said, would you like some potatoes? And she said, no, no, I don't have anything to cook it with. And I said, well, you can eat them raw. And she said, no, I like them thinly sliced. So I thought, honey, you're not hungry. <laughs> if you were hungry, I think you'd eat a raw potato. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. And that's, and that's the thing that we have to ask ourselves, you know, am I really hungry? Because we're just so used to, and, and it's just, a, it's a thing that we're, we're, we keep forgetting that we're just animals. That's right. And right? look at, they, they eat the same thing every day. Yes. They're out in the pasture eating whatever, whatever grain they're eating and whatever they're fed, you know, but they don't say, oh, I don't want that grass anymore. I want something different. Right. But when they find something in nature that they, they can eat, they'll keep going back to that same yeah. spot over and over again. And even if they go back there and they don't find it, it'll take them quite a while of going back there to see if that particular food source is, is still available, yeah. whether it's something you know, that ripened or, or whether it's an animal or whatever it is that they keep doing that. And it's kind of, and humans, you know, a lot of people will go over to the refrigerator, open it up, close it, walk away <laughs> and come back a half an hour later yes. and open it up again. Yes. And, and, and we have to think I am an animal. This is what I'm doing. Yes. I'm expecting something, even though it's not there, I'm expecting that I'll come back to it, open it up and something's going to be there. Uh -huh. You know, that's going to give me that dopamine hit that wasn't there an hour ago when I opened up the refrigerator door, yeah. you know, and I, and I think, uh, I think it's important to, to, to know that. And to, and, and like you said, you're, you're not eating, you're not chasing recipes as much anymore because when you get these dopamine hits from food, then it becomes more of, of a drug that you're seeking out other yeah. than sustenance. Yes. And that drug can be so many different things some people actually do use drugs and some people use alcohol and some people use sweets or whatever or use food but when you take time to listen to your body and say what is going on with me emotionally that i want to suppress that yeah exactly so so we were talking about keto today and you did the atkins diet so jesse t said what is the difference between keto and whole food plant-based i mean I would say that, that keto and Atkins are probably pretty similar. What would you say the difference is? Yes, well, I think with whole food plant-based, there aren't any animals involved. With keto, you're eating mostly animals or dairy. Um, let's see, when I say dairy, I say cheese. You know, probably not drinking milk and maybe not eating ice cream. But, you know, cheese was a big thing when I was on the keto diet. And eating sausage and eating butter and eating all of those high fat foods that come from animals really. And right. I think now with the keto diets, they're probably throwing in a little bit more vegetables, but very minimal. You could never enjoy a potato, I don't think, and any of the complex carbs. So I think it's really important to look at the difference between what is starch and what is a carbohydrate. And when we know that we're starch reports, then we eat the starch. And if you're on the keto, you know, you will trick your body and you may not be as hungry. Um, and if you give it to the test, that's what you're doing, then, you know, can you live on that forever? And with a whole food plant-based diet, I can live on this forever. It's not dependent on any magic. It's not dependent on, on any pills. It's not dependent on me being in a state of sickness to stay at that low hunger state like you might get with keto. And with keto, with that, with the Atkins diet, when I did go on it, the lowest I could get was down to 220. I'd go from 282 down to 220 and then back up and then down and back up, you know, and I never could even get any lower. But with this, I just zoomed down to 127. So, and I'm healthy, you know, and, I, and all those diseases are gone, you know, diverticulitis, 
uh, GERD, sleep apnea, um, oh gosh, constipation, uh, high blood pressure, uh, pre-diabetes, it's all gone. It's just, wow. it's just, it's a miracle, you know, yeah. and we are what we eat and food can be our medicine Absolutely. or it can be our, it can be our downfall too. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Well, thank you, Esther. You always so generous with your time and you always give a, a certain vibe whenever you're on. And a lot of the people have been commenting about the vibe that they feel when when you're here. And it's just it's very it's very calming and it's just it's just you feel you feel like you're in a safe, positive place. Yes. You know, and I really, really appreciate that you're you're here and that you shared your experience with the Atkins, which is like the keto diet. And I'm hoping that people who are considering or who are on the, the keto diet, I hope that you consider that the, the you're chasing numbers for pounds and, and on the scale, but the long term health results are the things that you should be thinking about because yes. you could be doing some real damage to your body by, by doing this. And, and I hope that you research it well and, and learn more about it. That's great. I think as Thanksgiving is around the corner and we're all going to be with maybe family and friends, hopefully, and sharing that time, I think it's just really important. What I want to say is be compassionate, be compassionate with yourself, be compassionate with those who are still, eating the standard American diet. Don't blame them. They're doing the best they can. They're doing the best they know. I did for 72 years, did the best I could. And so, you know, it's never too late, but I don't think we can project what we've done onto others and expect them to get the same message at the same time. But just hold them in the light and know that they're okay right where they're at and they just need your love and they need to feel they belong. And whether or not they're uh, doing Atkins or doing uh, a vegan diet, we all belong. We're all part of the same family. Yeah, very, very nicely said. Very beautiful. Well, everyone, please click like to show your applause for oh, Esther, because that's how we applause online. We click like <laughs> or we put a little heart emoji or something. So, Esther, we talked a little bit about your book and I gave links for that as well. But tell us about your Facebook group. Oh, OK. It's lots of fun. Um, I was at the gym one day and a friend of mine who has she in fact, she was on Atkins and I gave all my books to her because I thought somebody else will enjoy them. And then she ended up having bypass surgery, uh, gastric bypass. So I don't know how she's doing recently. But she was the one who said I needed to start a group on Facebook. So I, I started that um, back in probably 2017 or 18. And it's grown by leaps and bounds. And if somebody wants to join the group, I just have two questions I ask before I can approve you. And one is, what are your goals? Because if you don't know what you want in your life, there's no way I can help you. <laughs> you have to identify and claim what's important to you. And then the second question is I just ask if you've watch some of the videos and some of the other um, documentaries that are out there. So I just kind of know how far along you are on your journey. But it doesn't matter if you have or have not as far as being accepted in the group. And then every day I think of a word in the morning and think about it and expand it into an essay and post that. And then as I mentioned earlier, I post my words from 2021 and 2020 and 2019. So you don't have to buy my, my book. I mean, I post that every day. And then if I do a video making some food in the Instant Pot, I post a video every day, whether or not I'm making food, I read from my book. And let's see, and then I post pictures of everything I eat. So you can see how simple. So my goal is to have my plates look so identifiable that you can tell by looking what I'm eating. Now, sometimes there might be a salad or there might be something that I've eaten out and if I eat out, I try to post what the vegan menu said was in the food so that it helps. But I just want you to see how simple it can be. We eat whole food, it's identifiable. And so that's about my group. And now there's over 15,000. So I'm thankful for 
what it really says is how hungry people are for, for truth and for help and support. But ultimately, it's your brain that needs to be transformed so that you can be strong, be well, and be green with Amy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> and, oh, and, and watch so Amy. Much. She's just a delightful, loving person. And she and her husband have lost the weight. And I don't even know all the work that she does for all of you. But maybe if you need a coach, maybe you could join her group and you could maybe speak about that, Amy. Because I, I do coaching the best I can, but I can't hold your hand all day long. You know, I yes. can just... I can You're just, a busy woman. <laughs> yeah, I can show you what I do. And if you want to email me a question or something, I and some people post questions, and I try to answer everyone in my group that gets asked. But, you know, then I do have a life with Ben as well. So That's right. And that's yeah. very important to recognize that. Absolutely. Well, everyone, I want you to uh, tell us what are you going to remember from today? What's your takeaway? And we do have past interviews with Esther. We have Esther and Ben interviews with the two of them. And we also have Al, who, who's their friend. So we have quite a few different interviews that we've done with Esther. And you can get to hear different stories that they've told and, and more detail about their weight loss. And she even had an Instant Pot recipe demo that she did with us. So I encourage you to look for that in our uh, on my YouTube or Facebook with the Be Green with Amy. So I want to also thank Jess Test Voice. She did the countdown and the promos, and she did so much work with it. She does a lot of things on Instagram for us too, which I really very much appreciate. And Jess Test Voice, tell us who is coming up next. Don't know what to make for Thanksgiving? Cookbook author Faith Ralphs will show us how to prepare delicious plant-based Thanksgiving recipes on Wednesday, November 23rd, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, on Be Green with Amy Live. Well, I want to thank all of you, most of all. And from me to you, I would like to give you a virtual hug. So just go ahead and take your right hand and put it on your left shoulder and your left hand and put it on your right shoulder and give a squeeze because that's my virtual hug from me to you. I think hugs are very important in this lifetime and I've always, I've always enjoyed them and I, that's my hug from me to you. And if you want to go ahead and comment with me, you can comment on my tagline with me as I sign off with Esther. Are you ready, Esther? Yes. Okay. Until I see you all again, remember. Be, be strong, strong. Be well. Be well. And be, be green. green. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Esther. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now you can listen to Be Green with Amy expert interviews wherever you go. Listen while walking, meal prepping, or traveling. Find Be Green with Amy on Apple, Google, Alexa, Amazon, or virtually anywhere you find podcasts. Be strong, be well, and be green.